theme this year is uh, uh, keep it keep it in Christ in our memory. Remember Jesus Christ, uh, the seed of David. It's very important that we remember Christ. We're living in a world uh, that tried to live without Christ. Uh, humankind on a whole, uh, think everything sourced from them. They don't realize that the, the source is from God who created you and me. Whatever we do is uh, by grace. Grace means it's God helping us. Even if a person is not a Christian, the Lord still is helping us. He reigns on the just and on the unjust. That's the way grace is. Grace is freely given, but it, grace must be accepted through faith. Amen? Yeah. That's the great theme of the Bible. The just shall live by faith. What we're going to look at today, we want to look at the new we want to look at the idea of the new covenant and this new covenant provided by the blood of Christ. What is a covenant? Basically, to make it very simple, a covenant is, a, is, a, is an agreement between uh, two parties. Uh, in this sense, uh, let's take the old covenant. The old covenant was an agreement. What God did came to a certain people they were the children of Israel, known in the Bible. And he gave them the holy law coming through Moses, the leader. All right, when he gave the laws known as the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, under the Ten Commandments, what you see under the Ten Commandments is the holiness of God revealed. And uh, all those commands, for the most part, is built on, uh, is, we use the word in King James, Robert, thou. Thou shalt not. Well, thou is, a, is an old archaic form of the second person singular, you. You shall do this and do that. You shall. You shall not. You shall not. You shall not. You heard the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not. You individually. This is where the interpretation of, of description becomes difficult. It's one uh, of the ten there, thou shalt not kill. But that has caused a lot of controversy. Uh, here's a controversy called what the elaborate of the, the militia, the military. Uh, you have some, I'm not going to be a member of the military because I have to kill someone. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> but uh, they miss this word, thou, individually. Militia, a militia is a what? Is it? It's individuals in the militia, but uh, uh, no. How's a militia form? Uh, a militia. We have a military. Every nation uh, have a military. Yes. And they, they talk about what? When they talk about the militia, they talk about uh, how do you spell security? Yes. Yes. E C. Yes, E C. C U R I T Y. Okay. Every nation has a security. You hear it in the United States. Uh, the security of the nation. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what, what security do we have against foreign nations coming in to attack us to take over? We have the militia. We have the army, navy, Marines. air force. <laughs> What else? Marines? Well, the Marines and the Navy are about the same. Uh, the one that sails out on the, on the ship, the Marines on the ground. So the uh, Marines are ground forces of the Navy. They have the, well, I named them Army. <laughs> have an army, right? Yeah. Then you have to, uh, for the security of the nation. That's what, for a secure the nation. So those uh, foreigners want to take over America. They don't like America. Some of them don't like America. And that's why they come into America and they uh, suicide, uh, <laughs> suicide killers. They don't mind dying. They don't mind dying in the militia. War is not good. But uh, the Bible, in the Bible, in Romans 13, 
you have to have a security. That's why you have the police force. Police in the modern times wear a gun, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the olden times, before guns were developed, they had swords. So the Bible says that those in, a, in that authority do not carry the sword in vain, which means if it's necessary uh, to uh, use force with uh, with a with a sword, then uh, uh, if it's necessary for security, you have to put someone out that is killer. That is not thou. It's in the militia. You're a member of a, of a militia. It makes a difference. So much for that. But there uh, has been a problem uh, in in looking at the scriptures, and uh, the grammar of it is very important. If you don't, it's been a rambling over that. That's why I mentioned that today. But uh, the new covenant, the covenant which says what is a is an agreement between two parties. Well, in the Ten Commandments, remember Moses, picture Moses coming from the mount after receiving the Ten Commandments. And uh, he comes to the people. He gives the covenant to the people, uh, all that God said. <laughs> Most of it was built on not. <clears throat> Thou shalt not. All right, uh, he comes to the people. And the people hears the words of the law and what was the response to the covenant? All this we will do. You get a covenant? The Lord, give the covenant. All this we will do. And they added to it, and be obedient. They didn't know what they were asking because man, humankind, in and of themselves, cannot keep the law in and of themselves. But we need grace. God knew that. That's why he did what he did. Give you the law to prove. You see, humankind is very proud in himself. They think that they don't have any God. They're, they're, under, they're under their own control. You hear, you hear people talk about it. I just got it like that. Where do you get it from? I got it like that. See, it's pride. So God, God proved to humankind that in your pride, you need some help. So he gave the Ten Commandments to us. Now notice this, to a special people. He didn't give it to all people. He called the special people out from among the peoples of the world. And he says, you shall be my people. And they entered into a covenant relationship. And he proved through that, that one people, known as the Jews, he proved uh, that man on his own cannot keep the law. All this we will do. Prove through the Jews that he can't do it. He needs some help. So he didn't have to come to any other nation. <laughs> he didn't have to come to any other nation. He proved by one nation that all, and it says uh, uh, when this particular nation is separated from the nation, sin, after receiving the law from the Holy God, he didn't have to go to any other nation. It says, the Bible says, all people, all have sinned. And come what? Short of the glory of God. And it's true. Look at it. Look at the world today. Those who don't come to Christ create a problem within themselves. And when one person has a problem in himself or herself, and uh, you're among other people, if you're not very careful, others, we have imitators, others will imitate the negativity of one individual. Listen to the Bible. One man, one man added sin caused all the whole race to become sinners. Look at Romans 5. By one man. Right. So if one person is very, is, one person needs to be. And God approaches, even though he, he's approaching the group of people, he said, thou shalt not. He approached the group, and he speaks to each individual in the group. That's why it's the second person singular. And, and the person who heard the message that day uh, tried. It's all this. 
put it in a clause, all this we would do. So the people were in consensus uh, that they were going to keep the covenant. All this we would do. But when God spoke, he spoke to the we, but out of the we, he spoke to each individual. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, now. Brother Matthews. Yes. We, we should be glad that it rains on the, on the unjust. That's right. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't know <laughs> Because we wouldn't have made it. <laughs> so that's why I speak on grace. I said grace. Grace upon grace upon grace. I'm so glad, Brother Deans, that he, that God is good to me when I'm not good. He's been good to me coming into this world. He's been good to me all the time. I wasn't good. I can't say I was good. Uh, but he was good. <laughs> God is good, and it's, we have a, we said that, we have a, to add on, good all the time, <laughs> all the time good, you hear it, man. If God is good, then those he created should be what? Good, but here's the problem, we need to understand it. There are some who, well, all this evil in the world, God should do something about it. Okay, that's what they and say, why is all the evil in the world? Well, I make it very simple. How many of you know about robots? Robots. Yes. Robots. Yes. You know what a robot is? Yes. Okay. A robot is mechanically controlled, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, good. God didn't make you and me robots. <laughs> we were made in his image. So made in the image of God, God is free, isn't he? Right. So he made you and me free. We are free moral agents. Yes. And he gives you and me the power to choose. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And you, you, you see him working in the Ten Commandments. Right. Come to the people. Brother Matthews. Yes. That's basically all the power we need, right? Is to make the right choices. Yes. And everything else takes. We, the choices have to be guided. Mm -hmm. That's what God does in the Ten Commandments. He guides, He gives you. He shows you both life and death. Right. He said, but you choose. Mm -hmm. Free agent. You can either choose life and live, or you can choose death and die. That way, you can't blame. That way, the reason God did that, you can see it. No one could blame God. God, uh, if, if, if you should have come to me in, and you should have given me salvation. Unconditional. That's what Paul think. Unconditionally. But God, God, the salvation is conditional. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. It's conditional. What about those who don't believe? He that believeth not, it's in the Bible, shall be damned. Damn. It's clear. The Bible is clear. It is human. Human kind of makes uh, the Bible uh, difficult. Okay. Now listen. The old covenant was broken through sin. Man decided, humankind decided, they're going to do what they wanted to do. You see, you're free to do it. So humankind, for the most part, chose death instead of life. But God looked down upon man. Here's his grace. He looked down upon humankind and saw the undone condition. So he says, I'm going to give a new covenant. And the new covenant is not going to be like the old covenant. Uh, it's not going to be like the old covenant. The old covenant was based on law. And the folks said, they entered into a relationship, all this, we will do. Is that? You hear? We will do. That it, here's the way it should have been said. See what I'm saying? All this we will do, so help me God. Yeah. You hear? What's, what's the difference? All this we will do, so help me God. So when we say, so help me God, we are depending on your help, Lord, your grace. Yes. That's the difference. It's very important that we, under the new covenant, new covenant, understand that. Now what God did, he gave a new covenant. The new covenant is based on, well, the new covenant is based on grace. Yes. God gives, it's true, but man must 
receive God's gift through faith. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, listen to it. The Bible says, the righteous shall live, or the just shall live by faith. That's the new covenant. So then, what did he say? Faith comes by hearing. And that's the word of God. Hear the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing the word of God. So the word of God under the new covenant uh, comes through the law given. The law giver is God. So here's what happened. The grace of God, the grace of God is Jesus Christ. Now listen to the Bible. Titus 2, verse number 12. You remember? I believe it's Titus 2. These scriptures have to be committed to memory if you can, as much as you can. Uh, I think it's Titus chapter 2. Let me show you something here. It's very important that we understand this. If you don't understand this, Titus chapter 2, uh, I believe it's verse 12, beginning. Uh, read all of that chapter, but. Uh, I'm just making a point here. Uh, Titus, uh, that's the book. Uh, the letter is written by the Apostle Paul to his son in the gospel. That's Timothy. All right? Here we have it. All right? Remember now, Christ is God's grace manifested. See, grace is abstract in the word itself, grace. What is grace? I can't understand grace. Well, what God did, uh, he, he allowed grace to be made flesh. And Jesus Christ is the grace of God. Listen to Titus 2. This is it, under the New Covenant. We're going to talk more about the New Covenant in a few minutes. But this is under the New Covenant. He says, uh, verse 11 and 12, listen to the Bible. Now, this is the New Covenant of grace. Here's what's called. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. You notice appearance? Grace appeared to all men. Before it was an abstraction, a word. But grace appeared, became flesh. The same as, as the Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the grace of God that brings us salvation hath appeared, that's very important, to all men. Not some men, all men. All right? Now what does grace teach? Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So what does grace teach us how to live? Right. Notice? Teaches us how to live. And it gives some ad adverbs in how to live. Right? How are we to live? All right, listen to it again. How are we to live? Righteously. Take each word and think about righteously. Justly. It says the just shall live by faith, right? right. You and I are having a righteousness of our own. We can't manufacture righteousness. Impossible. Righteousness has to come through the grace of Jesus Christ living inside of us through faith. We are to live how? Righteously and godly. Where are we to live? In this present world. Some people will say, you, won't have, you can't have sanctification until you get out of this world. <laughs> All kind of thinking. Of you. you can't be, you really saved, you can't be saved here on earth. Uh, you got to talk about over there. Uh, here's how the world talks. The man upstairs. If there be a God. <laughs> oh Lord, help me. But uh, we have to really understand uh, the gospel. Look at verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a great God and Savior. Many get mixed up with that today. I'm kind of saying that Jesus Christ is God revealed. And the Word was what? Made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory. As of the only begotten Father. 
full of what? Grace. Full of grace and truth. truth. So if you want to understand grace, you want to understand truth, truth is in the person. Truth has become a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Hear him again. John 14, 6. I, this is Jesus speaking, I am the way, the truth. Let me put it again. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. So, so truth has been revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. But years ago, you and I haven't seen Jesus Christ. We weren't here when he appeared in the flesh. But thank God for the light. I love the word of God. Uh, thank God for the light. Do you remember one, one of his disciples by the name of Thomas? This is found in your Bible in the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John. Uh, when Jesus was resurrected, he appeared on those, uh, not all of them, the possible, but some, some uh, didn't see him as he appeared. Thomas wasn't there when he was here. Uh, Thomas said, they said he has a, no, I don't believe it. I will not believe it. <laughs> Can't believe that. He was resurrected. Now here's an insight. Those 12 apostles didn't believe all that Jesus taught. He said, oh, I wish I had been there. Back in that day, those people obeyed the gospel. No, they didn't. <laughs> like the people of our day. Even the apostles didn't believe that he was resurrected from the dead. He said he was going to come back, didn't he? When he came back, the 12 didn't believe. Read the Bible carefully. For example, you remember Mark chapter 16? Jesus appeared, and he upbraided them, you know, the word upbraided, scold them. Why did, he, why did Jesus scold the twelve? They because of their unbelief. Come on. He didn't finish. Because of their unbelief and, and hardness of heart. Read the Bible. Because of their unbelief and hardness of heart. He had to scold the twelve. Mm -hmm. And then he gives them the commission uh, uh, to go into all the world. All the world. And do what? Preach the gospel to every creature. Listen to this. And here's where it he comes in. You have, need to understand. We are what? Free moral agents. God has made us in his image. We have the power. Or he's given us the power to choose or reject. Mm -hmm. He honors that. So he said, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So you got faith there. In the verb form, believe. They say, he that believes not, listen to the choice. He that believes not shall be damned. So in that text alone, uh, no one, no human being can blame God <laughs> if he is not saved. No one can blame God. She's not saved. You don't blame God. You can't blame God. Because God will say, I made you free. You made the choice. I had to respect that because I made you free. I couldn't come in and make you do something. You're not, you're not robots. A robot, uh, the, human, the one who owns a robot can control the robot. Some of I was in the mall yesterday, and I, I, I looked out of the corner of my eyes, there was a, uh, a toy car, car moving, and I didn't see anybody at first. <laughs> I didn't see anybody. And then all of a sudden, I saw a fella, and he had a remote control. He was controlling that car. That's a robot. God didn't make you and me like that. He gave you and me the power to, to choose. You can choose to do good, or you can choose to do bad. But the world system, for the most part, uh, the world, for the most part, needs salvation. This is a problem. And, uh, here's what the world is, is on. If you, if you notice in Scripture, the world is governed by lust. Sometimes we put it plural, of the flesh. That's where the problem is. Lust of the flesh is humankind doing what they want to do. They make a choice to do what they like. 
apart from the revelation of God's will and the grace. I want to do what I want to do. Then when you get in trouble, they say, oh Lord, oh Lord, what Lord are you talking about? You rejected them. What Lord are you talking about? You rejected them. And that's the reason uh, we are in sin because of our rejection. But then God make you free. You, you could choose to do that, but then your rejection when we got in trouble, go oh Lord. Ignore the Lord. And every person can know the Lord in a sense. By creation. All you have to do look into the heavens, see the sun there. Right? Hasn't it always been there since you've been born? Hasn't it? Yes. It's been there, right? That should tell us something. Who's 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 in the control there? And not man. Man wanna to go to the moon. Man wanna to go to the planet, other planets. But I never find anyone wanna to go to the sun. S U N. Have you heard anybody wanna to go to the sun? No. Nobody said, oh, I don't wanna to go to the sun. No! Go to the moon or go to other planets. Go to Mars. They're trying to get to Mars now. Put him on the mark. But nobody ever said, I, I want to go to check out the sun. <laughs> humankind. Humankind make you laugh. Uh, but the abrient in themselves is the abrient. So we need grace, right? God sent to grace. And here it is uh, in the New Testament. Turn with me to Luke chapter 22. Let's look at the New Covenant. Very important that we see this. If you don't see it and I don't see it, then we don't see it. We are, we are, most, we are most miserable when we can't see into the grace of God. Most miserable. Right. That's why the world is... What book was that? So, pardon me? What book did you say time to? Luke 22. 22 of what book? 22. Luke. 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 Sorry, Luke 2.2. Two. Oh, oh. <laughs> Luke 2.2, yeah. okay. Luke 2.2, right, two. that's good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Verse, let's move down. Verse 19. I'm going to start there. Two verses, verses 19 and 20, okay? Here it is. This is Jesus uh, at the Passover. I wish I could read more. You read the, the whole of the chapter from, well, the whole of the chapter. You got 38 verses. I don't have time to go through the 38 verses. But this has to do with the Passover, Jewish Passover. All right? In the midst of Jewish Passover, Jesus inst inst institutes the Lord's Supper. Now, why, why did he institute the Lord's Supper? You have to hear. Uh, the words of scripture to understand uh, why this is done. Now remember, what is our theme for this year? Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. That's what Paul preached in various ways. Jesus Christ, his whole theme was Jesus Christ. Now watch what Jesus says. This is recorded by Luke. And he records it, the words of Jesus at the Passover. Amidst the Passover, uh, Jesus did something uh, unusual to those who were there. In verse 19, he took bread, Jesus, see that? And gave thanks, and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which was given for you. This do in remembrance of me. You see that? Remembrance of me. Notice verse 21. Uh, 20 rather. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. See it? Grace. Grace. It is, it is Christ coming uh, to us, sent 
This is the Bible. For God, why did he send Christ? For God so loved the world that he gave, listen to that word, he gave, that's grace, his only begotten son, that whoever, whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The new covenant is given to all who would accept it. Believe. Believe me. All who would accept it. It's, right. believe it. it's an action word. I believe what you have done, Lord, through your Son, and I accept it by faith. That's why, that's why you see the word believe. That's the action word for faith. I believe, Lord, what you said. I believe it. I take you at your word. I trust what you said. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to do what you have commanded. So in any time, any time we are taking the Lord, we call the Lord separate, think. When you take that to uh, the bread, remember, Jesus died for me. His body was on the cross, and you can see it in your mind. You can see it in your mind. Your death. Don't, don't look at the, what we call the cracker. Don't look at the cracker. Think about it. your mind. You can picture him. That's why it says remember. <laughs> we can picture the remembrance of what we have heard about him. You can see him on the cross. And when you look at him on the cross to faith, you say, he did that for me. And then we pass the fruit of the vine. What is the fruit of the divine when we think? They represent his blood. That's why they use the fruit of the vine. When you look at the fruit of the vine, doesn't it look like blood? Of course, we know it's, it's grape juice, right? Doesn't it look like blood? Yeah. Doesn't it? Lord has done something for us. Remember. So you, if you remember, you can see him on the cross and they pierce him in the side, and the Bible said, out come what? Blood and water. You can picture in your mind. <clears throat> and then, what do you do? You give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Here's, here's a testimony. Thank you, good Lord, for what you have done for me. Yes. <laughs> I say, for me. Because in the whosoever, the whosoever, what does whosoever mean? Anyone? What, what does whosoever mean? It's everyone. Me. Right. Me. Okay. <laughs> Aren't you a who? Right, yeah. Here you start thinking about it. You say, what's mine? Yeah. I didn't understand this before, but now it's opening up to me. I'm taking communion. I am remembering. I know I'm in a corporate group, the body. But when I take it individually, I remember what Christ did for me. You get it? Yes. <laughs> and we protect them. And, and each individual who protects them, you can say, thank you, God, right. for what you have done in sending your son to this earth to die yes. for my sin. Listen to the way. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. But who, who committed sin? All of us individually committed sin. So when Christ died, he died for the whole world. But he died for the whosoever. I love those pronouns, whosoever. He died for me. You can say that. Don't be afraid of Christ died for me. You can see it better if you Make it individual. Christ died for me. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said the wages of sin death. is death. Thank you, Lord, for taking my death mm -hmm. upon yourself so that I could go free. Sometimes we get that when you say free. <laughs> we'll get it mixed up. Free. Free in a sense. That you and I receive what God's gift by faith. 
but it's not free of the sins. Sin had to be dealt with. It had to be paid for. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. If the wages of sin is death, then sin has to be paid for in death. But what he has for grace come in here, it, it makes me, oh, it's, when I more think, I said, thank you, Lord. Here's where grace come in. God, in his amazing, that's why it's called amazing grace, took upon himself, took upon himself to allow Christ to take your place and mine. That's why the Bible said in the gospel, Christ died. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, but he, he, for me. Yes, and he gave his Each name. individual. Christ died for me. Yeah. I should have been the one there. Mm -hmm. And then too, whenever he gave, said he gave his only begotten son, I mean, one of us wouldn't do that. You know? <laughs> no. you, so you're looking at a human, you wouldn't. <laughs> Well, we would have did that, but he did. If he had more than one son, perhaps, maybe. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't give away two if he had two. But that's why the Bible stresses His only begotten. Mm -hmm. Only one. Mm -hmm. And who's going to give away if one son? You're going to give him away for everybody. <laughs> and you look down upon the everybody and none righteous. <laughs> there are none righteous, no, not one. And you're going to give your holy son, your only son, you're going to give it, you're going to give him for those unrighteous folk. Would you do it? Humanly, you wouldn't. Right. Humanly, you hear what I'm saying? Humanly, we wouldn't do it. But we see the love of God right. for you and for me. The love of God for you and for me. See how you have to make it individually. If you don't make it individually, uh, you won't see it. Apostle says, I declare unto you the gospel. Here's, here's the apostle to the Gentiles. I declare unto you the gospel. Paul, what are you declaring unto us in the gospel? How that Christ died for your sins according to scripture. And that he was buried. And that he was raised from the dead. That's the gospel. What did you hear? Christ? What do you hear? Come on. Christ? Died? For me! Hallelujah. See here, sister. See that hand. That's how we have to look at it. If you look at it religiously, <laughs> you won't see it. But if you look at it individually, uh, you will give the testimony. Your testimony will be a testimony of grace. And what is a testimony of grace? Look what God has done for me! Hallelujah. Give him the praise. But if you're walking by law, look what I'm doing. Just all stuck out. I did this. I did that. And I'm doing this. And I did that. <laughs> Cancel it. <laughs> That's where religion comes in. Religion is based on what a person can do. Grace is based on what God can do. It's a difference. I said religion. You're dedicated. What I can do. If you if you observe religious folk, they're always boasting about what I've done. Mm -hmm. It took me some time to hear. I'm at uh, functions, and the speaker. You got to. You want to introduce the speaker, right? You have a long list. Yeah. <laughs> what the accomplishment? Accomplish this, accomplish that, accomplish this, accomplish that. And the long, you know, growing up. And then the speaker gets up. I didn't know he was he was gonna say all that about me. But where did he get the information? Where did he get the information? From the speaker. Right. <laughs> Either he got the information off a computer or you gave it to him. And get up to something. I didn't, I didn't know he was going to say all that about me, I said. And I chuckled, I said, yeah, yeah you, want, you wanted him to say all that about you. Why? He wanted people to say, look at my accomplishment. Right. But grace says, look at what God has accomplished right. on my behalf in Christ. See, it's a difference. 
That's why they say we have to have a, want us to develop the mind of Christ. Christ didn't boast about himself. He boasts about his father. I always do the things that please my father. Didn't he say that? He always looked to the father. Anytime Jesus as a human on earth was about to do anything, he what did he do first? He prayed. And what is prayer? Showing. What? He's dependent on his father. He See, prayer shows dependence. I'm depending on my father. He's, he's walking by grace. Christ did it. Father, he prays, right? He prays when he was about to go to the cross for you and me. He called it a, it's a cup of suffering. He said, Lord, if it's thy will, let this cup pass from me. You remember? Three times a and then the third, he says, nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will be done. And he says, he got to say, let's be going. So we have to see that. You don't have to see that. Otherwise, if you, you and I don't see it, we'd be boasting. Oh, look at what I've done. Right. Shut up. <laughs> look at what God has done. Not only that, but look at what God is doing. Change your testimony. You change your testimony. I change my testimony. Watch life will be so much better. Mm, right. I don't change my testimony. Look at what I've done. I'm always struggling. Mm -hmm. that's right. Struggling. There are two words in the Bible. It's called I'm trying to think. Oppression. Am I spelling it right? Yeah. How you doing? Is that oppression? Yeah. There's oppression and there is D. I'm spelling this correctly. There's depression. There's different in the word. I mean, oppression is the enemy forcing himself upon you. And we allow the enemy, that's Satan, as he presses himself upon you, he, he gets, he want to get into your thinking. And if you're thinking fleshly, you're thinking outside of God's will. So the devil like that. He said, go ahead, go ahead. You know, you false now. But I can do it. The devil said, I like that. Go ahead, do what you, you can do. You think you can do it. Then you go out and do what you think you can do. And all of a sudden, something happened. Right. I don't feel right. And then uh, you, you get pressure on you, right? From that oppression, the devil has oppressed you. What happens to you? You, a person goes into a state of depression. All oppression starts. That's what Satan wants to do. He's always trying to op oppress us, so he can depress us, <laughs> so that we become depressed. And when we become depressed, the human mind says, "Wait, wait, here, Why Wait, God help me." That's how I hear Why God helping me? I ain't see grace. Yeah. In order for him to say, why, why ain't God helping me? God has given him. <laughs> His grace is showing so he can speak. Right. Never should say, I am. That's the wrong word for us, but he uses all. I am I'm so depressed. Christian use that I am so, why is a Christian depressed if we understand grace? If we understand a new covenant, why, why are we individually depressed? No wonder Paul prayed, especially to the Galatians. Here's what he prayed. That God would give them wisdom, listen to it, and a spiritual understanding. That's right. Why did he add the adjective spiritual? Why did he say, I pray that they would have an understanding? Yeah. See, see, the Bible is, is, is amazing. I wonder why he said that. That's in Colossians chapter 1. Let's look at it. Yeah, to be closing. It's almost about. Colossians chapter 1. You were remembering Jesus Christ, right? Right? This is very important. It's not your personal religion and my personal religion will step in. And all of us will be depressed. 
tell you, this is something, Colossians, chapter 1. You see it? Colossians chapter 1. Yeah. Colossians right up to the okay. He says, uh, look at uh, uh, verse 12 at the time, okay? Oh. Time is gone. <laughs> oh, you read that, okay? Paul's prayer for the Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. Have it? I'll just read verse 1, second bill. Verse 9, here it is. Here's Paul's prayer. For this cause, we also, since today we heard it, they heard of their faith in Christ, do not to cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled, listen to this now, with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's very important. And when we read the Bible, we get a spiritual understanding. Don't just read words. The Bible's not up for discussion in the first place. We like to discuss it. Not up for discussion, it's up for believing. Get a human discussion. Just listen to human discussion. This is my opinion. No, this is my. Oh, this is not that opinion. We walk by faith in God's Word. Lord, help me to understand your will. And what is His will for you and me? His will. That you and I become like his son. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants. That's what God does. That you and I individually become like his son. It's the Bible. And when we become like his son, instead of grumbling and complaining and being depressed, we say, Lord, Father, your will be done. Help me. Right. Amen. Sometimes that's all the prayer you need. You know, even human beings, we like to have a whole lot of words. Oh, Lord, architect of the universe, we come the humblest way we know how. Don't stop saying that. God knows how you're coming. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> Tell God, you're coming the humblest way you know how. Do you hear what you're saying? Oh, Lord. Help us, Lord. To say it right. <laughs> Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, we're so grateful for your grace. Yeah. It's manifested in your new covenant. That you've come to aid us. It's only by faith. Help us to understand. We want that spiritual understanding. Yeah. To understand your will on our behalf. Continue to guide us that we might help others to understand your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.